There are these major stellar events coming up this year, not just the total eclipse here in America in just two weeks, but there's another light show you may not have heard about. For the first time in 80 years, a star system located 3,000 light years from Earth will be visible to the human eye. Yeah, it's expected to happen at some point between now and September. It's being called a once in a lifetime event and it's known as a nova outburst. This is a conceptual animation from NASA of, of what we'll see ultimately showing what appears to be a new star in the sky. And the last time this happened, well, it was back in 1946. Won't be visible again for at least another 80 years. Let's bring in astronomer and Stony Brook University professor Frederick Walter. Uh, Frederick, thanks for joining us. So what's exactly going on here with this nova outburst and, and what can we maybe expect to see? Well, good morning. Um, a nova outburst is basically a, 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 a bomb, hydrogen bomb in space. Uh, what happens is that uh, it's a binary star system. One star is a white dwarf star about the size of the Earth, about as massive as the sun. And it is uh, orbiting a red supergiant star, which is blowing off mass. Some of this hydrogen is falling on the surface of the white dwarf. Uh, it accumulates over time, in this case, about over 80 years, you build up an Earth mass or two of hydrogen on the surface of the star, something ignites it, and you get an over-explosion. It's an uncontrolled thermonuclear runaway. Uh, hmm. That's a wow. great way of understanding it. Yeah. yeah. Oh, my gosh. Frederick, I am so looking forward to this. So we're located in New York City, by the way. I'm curious, will this be visible when this occurs? Will this be visible across the world, or is it only going to be in particular locations on Earth? If it uh, goes off between now and, and uh, <clears throat> September, October, it will be visible, <clears throat> excuse me, everywhere. Um, it's the nova will get up to about second magnitude. Uh, that's about the 50th brightest star in the sky. It's the same as uh, Polaris. If you can see Polaris from New York City, uh, you can see this nova. Uh, it'll be easy to see if you get out to a, a dark place. Uh, it will be bright for a few days. It will get up to, to as I said, second magnitude and then fade. Uh, in a dark place, you can probably see it for a week or two, uh, especially if you have binoculars. Yeah, that's going to be, I think, a good telltale sign. Polaris, of, of course, as we know it, I guess, in the layman's terms, uh, the North Star. The, uh, the the nova outburst, though, that, that we, we talk about, it is different than a supernova. Without getting too much into the weeds, uh, are you able to speak to to the difference and, and why this, this event is, is different than a supernova? Yes, a, uh, a supernova is the complete detonation of a white dwarf. It collapses into a neutron star. Uh, and it releases an enormous amount of energy. Um, a nova is just a surface explosion. The white dwarf stays behind, and that's why it can happen again in another 80 years in this case. Frederick, this is just incredible. You know, will we be able, you know, should this happen, you said now, from between now and perhaps October or so, is this going to be something that we see in the sky for just a couple of minutes, a couple of days, months? What's the time duration look like? A few days. Uh, this is a uh, an example of what's called a recurrent nova. They tend to be very fast. They will they brighten up um, in a few hours and then they decay down to invisibility uh, over a period of um, a few weeks. Let's say it'll be visible to the naked eye for a few days to a week. And from what I've understood, it could happen now. Mm -hmm. It might not happen until August. I mean, we just have a, a timeline that we're following here. It's fascinating. And we appreciate you joining us on Weather Command to discuss. Astronomer and Stony Brook University professor Frederick Walter, thank you for the insight and the perspective here. Thank you.